because his works will come from that dimension in this new season. Do you understand that? Okay. Now that you got that, I want to explain the kingdom of the heavens. That's the dimension that Matthew saw. The dimension that Matthew saw entails the reign of heaven. That heaven was designed to reign over earth. Are you with me? Or you are not with me? Heaven was designed to regulate earth. Whereas you might find insufficiency on earth, there is sufficiency in heaven. And only men that know how to relate with the realities of heaven can find sufficiency in the administration of the Christ in spite of the measured possibilities that exist in time. There is a scripture in the book of Psalms that gives us a picture of what Matthew means by the phrase the kingdom of heaven. And that scripture is in the book of Psalms 115 verse 16. I'd like us to look at it because the scripture unveils uh, issues of jurisdiction. Uh, it it, it uh, unveils issues of territorial integrity. It unveils issues of priesthood and permission. Is anybody there in the book of Psalms 115? Are you there? Can we read verse 16 together? One, two, go. So the scripture reads, the heaven, even the heavens, you will notice the plural there, that's the only scripture in the entire Bible that renders it the way it is rendered in the book of Matthew. The heaven, even the heavens, so there's a particular heaven he's talking about. Are you there? The particular heaven he's talking about is the third heaven where the government of God is established. He said that heaven is under God's control but by an act of a royal decree God has given the earth to the sons of men so we see jurisdiction in that scripture after this royal decree that God has made God it will be illegal for God to come into the earth without a human giving him access because God will be contravening his own laws his own utterances and the Bible says that he has exalted his word above all his name so if God speaks he, his words become law and he himself becomes subject to the things that he has said so by a royal decree God gave out the earth and said it will be man's place are you there? Okay. So we have two things now. Man is the warden of the earth. The heavens belong to God. But the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So how would the kingdom of God come into man's realm? You see, in establishing the kingdom of God, the reign of God, the influence of, of God upon the face of the earth, the role of man cannot be overemphasized because this is his realm. And the way God does it is that God, are you there? The entry point that God has into 
The human vessel is his spirit. That's the reason why God decided to operate from the spirit realm. It's, it's a risk. Because the book of John chapter 4 says, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And if God is spirit, it means he, he doesn't have a three-dimensional body. Are you there? And this realm is for three-dimensional entities. So it means for God allowing himself to be spirit, he has exempted himself from this physical realm. But the reason why he took that risk was because of man that he created. In God's wisdom, he created your spirit as a vessel. That is what he is going to wear. He's going to wear your spirit and then you will become the one that will take him around in your realm. The extent of God that comes out through your vessel is the degree to which you have, mani you have yielded to his authority. Because this kingdom we are talking about is going to be made manifest. This rule, this reign of God that is established in the heavens will be made manifest in your heart first. God conquers your heart and God begins to establish his reign in your heart. So he will reign in you first before he reigns through you. Are you there? So the Spirit of God now enters into your, your, your inner man. And then you are given to anger. The next time you operate in anger, the Spirit of God is grieved. And he registers his grief sufficiently well for you to know that he is not excited about that anger. If you are wise, are you there? Are you with me? If you are wise, you will know that what the Spirit of God is saying is that you don't know how to live. So you will repent from that anger. He's saying that this anger is not of me. This anger is not part of my nature. This is not how I operate. If you are wise, you will repent. You will make peace with him and ask him to help you. And then you gain an alignment again. Then the next day, someone comes and trust Satan. Satan is going to generate another situation that requires a more terrible, a more pragmatic response. Are you there? Then you remember how he corrected you yesterday and you don't want to be in that situation of feeling his displeasure again. You say, no, I will not respond. It's better for me to be ashamed. So you begin to make effort to keep what you have with him. And all of this is happening where? Inside. You begin to make adjustments so that you can stay in alignment with him. You can stay. Then when the anger, the anger matter becomes settled, he now takes his searchlight and then shines on your finances. Say, what exactly is directing the way you spend money? Then he starts there. And that's it. It's a very difficult. Normally, for an average Christian, mm, in charge of your pocket. Flash it on the way you relate to be, with people. Are you there? So one evening, under the anointing, you will now shout shout on your wife, and. Because she's not a rebellious person, she may not shout back. And then you are now going. And he comes and says, Are you aware that she's my daughter? This is your shout. Go on. In order for us to discuss again, go and apologize. That's how you now discover 
how strong the flesh is. It will take you like 14 days. You... <laughs> I'm telling you what happened to me. I'm telling you what happened to me. <laughs> you are preaching to other people about yielding to the Holy Ghost and then that situation just comes up just to show you that you, you are not yielded yourself. It takes 14 days. And your presentation of the sorry was not even sorry. It was like, it was... <coughs> he's insisting. He, he's insisting that he must reign. He must reign. Then when he begins to reign, he can use you as a law enforcement agent to take care of situations where Satan is reigning. Because you are aligned, you are under his government, you are under his rule, you are under his dominion, you become a vessel through whom he can express himself. So there is a, a dimension in salvation. Thank God for that. Oh, you are not following me. But as you journey with God, he opens the gate to government. It's another dimension. And someone that gave his life to Christ yesterday may not even understand why your own life is like this. The person is enjoying salvation. Meanwhile, in government, he takes your hand and he begins to guide you to a place you don't want to go. You know, the motivational preacher said, go where you are celebrated. That's not Christian. That's a demonic statement. Because Jesus is going to lead you to places you are not willing to go. That's a proof that his government is established upon your life. He will send you to places where you can lose your life easily. If, if the depth of his government has been established over you, you will, you will obey him. You know, obedience to God will not come to you naturally. When you wake up in the morning, tomorrow morning, tell God, I want to obey you today. And walk out. You might fight before you come back home. Because the devil is going to set you up to violate your intentions. You will see how strong and how firmly established the flesh is in your life. That's when you will discover that one of the products of the fall is the flesh. And the objective of the flesh is that it wants to gain control of your life much more than the Holy Spirit. The flesh is saying, I couldn't stop you from getting born again, but I can stop you from submitting to the Holy Ghost. So when somebody slaps you, the flesh will tell you how to respond. That the people that watched you are 2,000. <laughs> you were on the stage, on the spotlight. 2,000 people saw that you were slapped. The only way to redeem your image is you slap, no, not just to slap, but you slap with, with your left, and then you. The flesh has a prescription for every circumstance. And if you are not, if you are not designing, you will think it is you that is making those suggestions. You don't know that it's a funded nature speaking out of your vessel, trying to convince you to be Adam. So the objective of the flesh is to see that the Holy Spirit doesn't gain dominance because the Holy Spirit is supposed to be the Lord that makes you access spiritual knowledge. He's the navigator within. The flesh doesn't want him to become Lord within. Another aspect of resistance to the government and self is an alternative God. Chapter 14, verse 12 to 14 was drawn from self. I will. It's a God that wants you to undermine the authority of Jesus Christ over your life. Whereas the flesh wants to, you to undermine the place of the Holy Spirit in your life, 
because it's supposed to be Lord within you. Self is an alternative God that wants you to undermine Jesus so that he's not Lord over you. And the equation of the fallen man is self plus flesh equals old man. That's the equation. So Satan wants us to operate, even though you are born again, he wants you to operate after the order of the old man. So the Lord within you don't acknowledge his authority and the Lord over you, you are not in sync with his government. When that is the case, it means that you accepted salvation but you rejected the government of God. So that statement that Matthew made, the kingdom of the heavens, that kingdom of the heavens has not yet come to you. Because, are you there? When you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit will begin to give you perception of the emphasis of the kingdom of God, the reign of heaven over your life. The Holy Spirit will say, don't marry that sister. It will come like a thought, but it will be sustained. Don't marry that sister. And then you now tell the thought because you say something told you. But you don't know who is talking. You now tell the thought that are you the one to tell me who to marry? The guy is born again, but he doesn't want to yield to the authority of the Holy Spirit. So in him, the reign of heaven has not found a footing. So he's saved, but it's not useful to God because he still has the same rebellion as the fallen man. What the Lord said I should tell us today, the church in South Africa, is that we've accepted him for our lives. The entire landscape reflects the fact that he's not reigning. And if God is not reigning on earth, it means that his people are not yielded to him. His people do not recognize his authority within their hearts. His people are not loving of him enough to be willing to pay a price to serve his will. Are you still with me? So this, the flesh will be struggling. It is, it, the flesh is struggling to ensure that the authority of the Spirit of God is not established over your life. Self is struggling so that the authority of Jesus will not be established over your life. And as long as that is the case, you will not have the authority, the endorsement of heaven. Heaven, heaven will look at you and what heaven will say about you is that the only thing he's good at is to rebel. So the hopes, the same government that has happened to you, to others, does not exist. Because you are a rebel. I'm not saying you are not saved. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying you have not allowed the reign of heaven. So if we go to the book of Matthew, the first message that was preached in the book of Matthew is repent. For the kingdom of the heavens is at hand. Because when the perspective of the kingdom of heaven comes to repent, to accommodate it, 